Each year we get a new iPhone, but every two years we get the S model, the iPhone that doesn't change its looks but refines its innards so that it can stay relevant. The S line is where Apple seems most comfortable to experiment. This year the company has brought 3D touch to its iPhone displays. Their cameras have finally seen the upgrade the world was waiting for. Their bodies are also sturdier and less likely to bend thanks to a new 7000 series aluminum chassis. It's not all sunshine and roses. The iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus are noticeably heavier than their predecessors and all of their direct rivals. Apple is also stubbornly sticking with 16 gigs of storage for their base model. So is the jump on the iPhone 6S bandwagon worth it? Stick with us to find out what our tests have to say about that. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are visually identical to their predecessors, aside from the letter S that's printed on their backs and the new pink paint job which Apple insists to call rose gold. The not so obvious change is the thickness and weight, but you'd really need to hold the older devices as a reference to notice the difference. What you get in turn for the increased weight are the new 3D touch enabled screens and a tougher aluminum build. The unsightly antenna lines are still prominent in the design and are even more noticeable on the rose gold version. The bezels are still just as huge. But the build of the new iPhones is just as refined and curved as ever and these two devices will continue to be the object of much craving. The new iPhones use Apple's second generation Touch ID fingerprint sensor and it is fast. It could quite possibly be the fastest smartphone reader to date. Unlocking is so quick that you don't even get a chance to glimpse your lock screen notifications before your home screen shows up. The display size remains unchanged from last year, 4.7 inches in diagonal for the iPhone 6S and 5.5 inches for the iPhone 6S Plus. While both share the same screen technology, the bigger display on the 6S Plus offers a much higher resolution making it much sharper. The bigger screen real estate also brings an extra joy to use for multimedia consumption and gaming. The latest models top their predecessors in terms of contrast but have lower brightness levels. The displays on the iPhone 6S Duo are easily among the best LCDs out there and that's especially true for how they look in bright sunlight. Fans of stereo speakers will be disappointed with these two. They still carry only a single bottom facing unit and it ranks as below average in our loudness test, around the same as last year's iPhones. What that loudness rating won't tell you is the excellent quality emitted from these speakers. Apple has already released its latest iOS 9 and current iPhone users will be very familiar with the OS even before picking up a new 6S device. The new features are less groundbreaking and more refining. The Universal Spotlight search is still available with a pull down but now also occupies the leftmost home screen. The task switcher has also been reworked and now shows taller app thumbnails and a lot more eye candy. With the bigger display of the iPhone 6S Plus, you get a landscape version of the interface within supported apps, but that was available under iOS 8 as well. 3D Touch is perhaps the most important novelty that the new iPhones bring to the table. It makes the layered interface of iOS feel physically real. You get two levels of pressure sensitivity, which enable many features of the OS. You can press hard on a photo or link to preview it, and press a bit harder to open it full size. Apple calls these peak and pop. 3D Touch works on the home screen too. A deeper press on an app will display any quick actions it offers. With 3D Touch, most of system apps will offer you some kind of a shortcut, such as creating an alarm, adding an appointment, or taking a selfie, or even a slow motion video. 3D Touch makes text selection very intuitive as well. A press on the keyboard will allow you to quickly and accurately move the cursor around and a deeper press will start the text selection. Apple's live photos work only with 3D Touch. You activate the animated part with a hard press on the screen, regardless whether it's on the lock screen or in the gallery app. Apps that aren't ready for 3D Touch will let you know with a subtle vibration which is part of the new built-in haptic feedback engine. We expect more and more apps to take advantage of the new pressure sensitivity and the potential for gaming is exciting to say the least. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are built around the latest dual-core Apple A9 chip and make use of 2GB of RAM for the first time. The result is a high-flying duo that topped our benchmark tables. The only place where the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus were outscored was the multi-core Geekbench 3 test where the Octa-Core Galaxy S6 came out on top. Outside of that single core performance of the A9's Typhoon core is unmatched by anything we've ever tested. But the great performance isn't only CPU focused. The Power VR graphics processor smokes the GPUs found in the top of the line Snapdragon and Exynos chipset. When we saw that the new crop of iPhones was brought thicker and heavier, we didn't expect the batteries to be smaller. Sadly, they are. Luckily, battery performance hasn't degraded. The new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus both outperformed their predecessors in our proprietary endurance rating, with the 6S Plus reaching a superb 85 hour rating. If we break down the numbers, the new iPhone 6S pair managed longer web browsing and video playback times and only showed lower call times. 
This year Apple finally upgraded the camera on its iPhones. The 8 megapixel resolution we were stuck with since 2011 has finally been replaced with a 12 megapixel camera, which still seems a bit small in the face of competing smartphones. The f2.2 aperture isn't very wide either now that Samsung and LG both ship camera phones with wider apertures. The optical image stabilization is again reserved only for the bigger iPhone 6s Plus, but this time around it's used not only in photo taking but also in video recording as well. But outside the increase in photo resolution, the new camera is now able to capture 4K video which is a huge upgrade compared to 1080p. iPhone cameras have become synonymous with great image quality and the 6s pair is no different. Just don't expect a striking difference compared to the older iPhone 6 Duo. Detail level is high and colors are true to life, more so than on any other competitor. But for the first time ever we see some overprocessing from an iPhone camera. There's also a lot of noise in the images even in good light. On the bright side, dynamic range is in a league of its own, even without using the auto HDR feature. Shadow and highlight details remain high in any condition. The auto white balance is also great. The two-tone flash does a good job to properly light human skin tones and the front camera is aided by the screen flashing and max power so that it gets better exposure on selfies. This certainly helps in low light situations but in extreme dark scenarios selfies come out no noisy and with harsh lighting. Overall, we're quite happy with the 5 megapixel front facing camera, but we wish the lens was wider to capture more than just a single person. Finally, the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus can capture the so-called live photos. Essentially, these are 3 seconds of 1080p video, complete with a 12 megapixel still. The feature works amazingly well, but it's quite hard to share with somebody out of your iOS circle, and leaving the mode permanently on will quickly fill your storage with live photos of everyday objects you may not need animated. As already mentioned, 4K video is one of the camera's main selling points. It's a huge leap over 1080p, but it will also take its toll on storage, so don't go buying a 16GB iPhone with the hopes of shooting lots of 4K footage. The quality of 4K videos is quite high. Processing seems more balanced than that of still photos. Compared to 1080p, 4K offers an immense boost in quality, but the iPhone 4K videos would find it hard to match the quality of its best equipped peers. When it comes to photos and video, the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus are a good upgrade over their predecessors, but we expected more. We expected the iPhone to be an instant contender for the top spot in smartphone imaging, but it isn't the case, not this time around. So there you have it. These are the new iPhones. They are a mix of some hot new techs such as the 3D Touch, 4K video and smoking fast chipset, along with a bunch of recycled software gimmicks like live photos and live wallpapers, screen flash and patches to old build quality issues in the face of the new aluminium frame. It's a little lackluster of an effort, but also comfortable. An easy upgrade for the iPhone users that want just a bit more power or camera resolution. But as we all know, it's never about the specs with the new iPhones. They're a love it or hate it affair and getting one is a no-brainer if you own any of the older iPhones and you'd like to stick around in the app ecosystem, but you fancy playing with a more recent hardware. As for iPhone 6 users, you might want to wait until the next model comes around. Unless you are only after a bigger screen, in which case the year-old iPhone 6 Plus might just do the trick for you. Thank you.